Before I start talking about all of the safety features that reside at the business end of the table saw, I want to take a quick look at kickback and analyze how it happens and what kind of things you need to avoid to prevent kickback. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is a rip cut. And when we go ahead and push the board past the blade here, the blade is going to be slicing down into the table and driving the board down into the table. And as we push this thing past the blade, it's going to continue to cut the, at the front of the blade, pushing that board down into the table. But we already learned that as we push forward, the board tends to slide towards the blade. In other words, it's pushing into the blade. If the board is allowed to move away from the fence, if it is not held rigid up against this fence, you're going to get a problem and it's going to probably result in kickback. So as this moves, if it comes away from the fence, you're looking at a dangerous situation that's likely to result in kickback. If you were to see that occurring, you would either want to push the board back against the fence or turn the saw off and hold this in place until the saw stops. But let's look at a kickback, what happens. So there's two kind of things that can happen. One is if the board comes away from the fence, what can happen is it will start to climb onto the blade. Since the board is allowed to move, now all of a sudden we run into a problem that the blade can't keep up with the cutting requirements. Since this is moving, it's easier for the blade to just push the board than it is to cut it. So what ends up happening is that since the board's moving, it's not going to cut through it. It's just going to carry it away. So what tends to occur is as this board gets picked up, it moves into the blade. The blade is going to grab it. And as it spins, it's going to start moving the, blade, the board across the blade and back. And it does this very, very rapidly. Um, now if you've ever seen someone cut by a table saw, what you'll often see is they have a diagonal cut, meaning like you'll see a cut on their hand something like this. Okay? And if you see someone's hand like that, you pretty much know it's a table saw accident. And the reason is, is because they always occur the same way. They're going to drag the board across the blade and they're going to keep your hands going across it as well. We'll show you how to prevent that later on, so don't let it scare you too much. But you do need to understand that kickback is very dangerous, very violent, and it happens quickly. And you won't be able to avoid it once it occurs. Once it's set in motion and starts traveling, it's very, very hard to stop that board from from being kicked back. So that's why the multiple layers of protection are important and we'll talk about those later when I show you how to cut. But So one problem is if the board comes away from the fence that can cause a problem. It will get grabbed by the blade and then gone across and back towards you dragging your hands with it very likely. The other area where you see a problem is the back of the blade actually lifts up so the front of the blade pushes it down into our guide, which is what we want, but the back of the blade does the opposite. It actually picks the board up and wants to lift it. So sometimes what can happen, especially if you don't have this splitter or riving knife on here, is that the board will go through, it will move just a little bit on the back, just a little bit into the blade, and then that, that blade will pick the board up and then do the same thing, slide it across and backwards. And it does this very, very quickly, okay? So when you're doing a rip cut, there's two kind of dangers. One is it coming away from the fence anywhere here, and the other one is that the back of the blade will pick it up and drag it across. So to prevent both of those, you must keep the board up against the fence. Okay, the next problem that we have is with cross cutting. So let me move around the saw so you, my hands aren't in the way. So as you do this miter cut, again, you run into the same problem. The teeth are pushing the board into the table saw, which is good. But as you get to the back, the teeth are picking the board up. So there's two kind of ways that um, problems occur with cross cutting. One is that you let the board slide a little, that you're not squeezing it tight up against the fence of the miter gauge. You must squeeze it down against the table and up against the fence. Remember, those two things are critical for every cut on the table saw. 
flat on the table, flat up against the fence. If you can just guarantee that, you'll get rid of 99% of the accidents. Unfortunately, you can never guarantee that, so that's why we use multiple layers of protection. But again, as this thing's cutting, it's putting force on here and it's trying to drag the board this way. And if the blade pulls the board into the um, blade farther, then you get that same kind of reaction where it's easier to push the board than it is to uh, cut it. And that's why you'll get that violent kickback. So we can prevent that by just keeping it rigid up against the fence of the miter gauge. And remember, you can always rig up clamp setups too. If you don't think you can hold something tight enough or, you know, sometimes when you're cutting these at a miter angle, it can be hard, harder to hold on to. So you can rig up things that hold it rigidly in place too. We'll talk about those at a later video. It's a little more advanced. Okay, so one problem is that this slides into the blade as it's cutting. Remember, the blade's going to want to try to drag it that way. The second problem is sometimes people cut, goes through perfectly fine, and then they pull this back to the starting position. And that is something you should never ever do on the table saw. Nothing ever gets dragged backwards on the table saw. You're just asking for a terrible kickback in that case. So when you make your cut, you either need to slide the board to the side and then drag it back or you need to just leave it there until the saw stops and then go ahead and pull it back once the blade's completely stopped. But never, ever, ever drag this board back into that spinning blade. You're just asking for it because on the back it's so easy for it to pick this board up and snag it because the blade's going up. So never, ever, ever bring it back. So those are the two kind of kickbacks that you're going to see on the saw. One that occurs from a rip cut or one that occurs from a cross cut. And both are prevented the same way, keeping it flat on the table and flat up against the guide. So now we have to ask ourselves, what happens if that doesn't occur? What happens if I can't keep it up against those guides? Then we're going to have more problems. We're going to have the kickback. So there's some other protections that the saw provides. We're going to talk about those next. But until you understood how kickback occurs, it's very hard to understand the rest of it. So now we're going to get into all the guts of the safety equipment that's around the blade. And then hopefully that should make it very apparent how we keep ourselves safe while making a cut on the table saw. The first safety device I want to talk about that's right by the blade of the table saw is the splitter. Okay, This is a regular splitter, this is a riving knife. Uh, we're going to use both in our demonstration but I just wanted you to see. So this is the part we're talking about, this solid steel piece that sits behind the blade. Okay, this one's a splitter, this one's a riving knife. The advantage of this riving knife is that it goes up and down as I raise or lower the blade. The advantage of that is that even on um, boards that I don't want to cut all the way through, I can still use the riving knife. If I was trying to cut halfway through a board with the splitter, the saw blade would cut it and then it would get snagged on the splitter. So we're going to have the riving knife for this demonstration. As we go ahead and cut this board, the board starts as a full 100% board, but as you cut it, the blade will start to make a kerf in the saw, and the kerf is what is removed from the cut. So as this board moves through the saw here, we already said that the board will want to travel into the blade. And that is what we have to prevent. We have to physically do that. Nothing else will help us do that other than us. We have to do it. They, are, they do make a couple of attachments you can put on the saw, but in general, you're not gonna be using those. So it's gonna be up to you to keep this up against the fence, okay? As the board moves through, that natural tendency will try to bring it into the blade. You will prevent that. But as you start to cut, what happens sometimes is this board has built up internal stresses in it and the board can bend and twist and warp. And while this board is this wide, it has that much strength. But as soon as you cut it, now it's got less strength because it only has this much strength on this side and this much strength on this side. So before where the board might be perfectly square, now as you start to cut it, it may release some of those stresses and the board may shift on you a little. In addition to that, there's something called reaction wood. 
Reaction wood uh, occurs in trees that are growing on a hill. You'll see the tree grow out from the hill and then come up. That's, um, that part of the tree that curves like that is reaction wood. And no matter how many times you square up the board, it's going to tend to go back to that curve. And you don't know by looking at a piece of wood when you're going to encounter reaction wood. But when you do, oftentimes the board will just jerk into the blade and it will do it so with such force and such speed that you can't prevent it sometimes. Sometimes it's slow and gradual and sometimes it just releases quickly. So you have to be very careful about um, all of these operations because you can never guarantee that it's going to stay against your guide because of all these things. You might encounter a piece of rot in the wood. You might hit a hidden nail. Um, there might be a defect in the board, maybe a knot that comes loose. All different kinds of things can cause the board to shift around. So because of that, they've put this thing in here, in this case a riving knife, but I'm just going to call it a splitter for now. So the splitter here keeps the board split. So when the board wants to try to go into the blade, causing a kickback, this splitter keeps the board physically from going into the blade. It's probably the most important safety feature here because it helps prevent so many accidents. Now, I've seen some saws with this removed on it, even on YouTube by these supposed professionals. Please do not ever make a cut without a riving knife or a splitter on there. It's one of those operations you should, it should be on for pretty much every single operation on the saw. There are one or two exceptions, like when you're doing dados and things like that, but in general, this thing needs to be on for pretty much every single cut that you're cutting all the way through a board. So do not take this off for any reason except for those very few circumstances, okay? So that's the goal of the splitter. It keeps the board split so that it cannot go back into the blade probably the most important safety feature and I would say this thing does prevents kickback better than any other safety feature keeps you safer than probably any other safety feature so again never ever take this thing off okay that's the splitter or the riving knife